Hello, and welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. This is episode 18. Hello and welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. My name is Casey and I'm the maker here at Young Folk Knits. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me again. And if you are a new viewer, you are very welcome. This is a podcast mainly about knitting. I do some sewing and really whatever other craft is tickling my fancy at the moment. I live on a small farm in Arkansas with my family where we raise honeybees and chickens and gardens and our kids <laughs> so we stay we stay pretty busy around here you can find me on instagram at youngfolk.knits and on ravelry you can find me under casey apple today it's an overcast rainy chilly day in arkansas the high today i believe is around 63 so that doesn't bother me. I like cooler weather. I know that we probably won't have another day like this until October. <laughs> I, I think the warming trend is supposed to start after today. So I'm enjoying a little bit of cloudy, rainy drizzle. And I decided to indulge in some knitwear. So let's chat a little bit about what I'm wearing. <laughs> shown this in the first ever episode of the Young Folk Knits podcast. This is my Vertices Unite shawl, which is a pattern by Stephen West. And I made this shawl last winter, so maybe about a year and a half ago. And I absolutely love it. It comes in two sizes, so you can make the bigger size or the smaller size. Bigger is always better. <laughs> So I went with the bigger size. I'm 5'8". I felt like the bigger size would be nice for me. I made mine mostly out of Magpie Fibers Swanky Sock. So they're fingering MCN base. Um, except for one color I used, which is this blue. That is a Woolberry Fiber Co. color. And I think, I want to say it's called Summit but that might not be right. I'll link this project from Ravelry down below in my notes and it has the names of all the colors that I used. This is one of my favorite shawls I have ever knit. There's just something about the combination of straps. The colors to me are neutral, but they're still punchy. I don't know how to describe it. 
So I've got some Tupelo honey from Magpie Fibers. The stripes with that Woolberry Fiber Co. Um, the white color is Stag Bunny. It's just, a, it's not really white. It's more of a neutral white gray cream. <laughs> Um, this is Mesa, I believe, and then I have Selkie and Stag Bunny again. I want to say that this is Bougie Beaver, but it might be Desert something. <laughs> and then I did an I-cord edging of Selkie all the way around. Let me see if I can show it all to you. absolutely love this wrap. I think that it is so fun. I want to say that he also released this same pattern uh, as a baby blanket maybe. So a little bit shaped a little bit different. But I couldn't believe how fast this knit up. A lot of it had to do with the fact that I couldn't wait to add the next color in. <laughs> There's a lot of knitting to the border of the previous um section and picking up stitches from that section and it just looks so clean it's well written i would love to make another one of these um, this one has all my perfect colors in it though so it'd be hard to hard to make another one that i liked more but i think it would be fun to make another one that's just different maybe some greens i don't know we'll see i have so many things going on right now that i just can't possibly <laughs> add this to my list at the moment but i would 100 percent knit this again Okay, so now that you know what I'm wrapped up in today, then let's move to finished objects.
so happy because I have finished my easy cardigan. <laughs> You know when the color, the yarn, the fit, everything just sort of comes together to create that perfect garment. It happened for me this time. So this was a test knit that I have done for Alex from Varen Rose on Instagram. And her patterns are available on Ravelry and Etsy. So I'll put a link for those in the description below. This is the easy cardigan, as I mentioned before, and I knit the size extra large, and I knit it in Madeline Tosh, um, Tosh DK, which is a superwash merino, and it is in the color Dr. Zhivago Sky. I had been dreaming about a cardigan out of this color, and I had a little bit of trouble finding the exact blue gray that I wanted. And I was looking on Wool and Company. So they have a website. They're, I think, a local yarn store in Illinois. But um, I have to order pretty much all of my yarn online because the most local yarn shop to me is about two hours away, unfortunately. So it's always a treat to get to go there, but um, I don't get to do it often. So back to the yarn. I was looking on Wool and Company a while back and I saw this yarn. I didn't know what I was gonna make with it, but I knew that I had to make something with it. <laughs> so I got a sweaters quantity and I absolutely love to order from Wool and Company, by the way, for anyone who's looking for another place to add to their yarn shopping list. So I had this in my stash. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. And whenever Alex told me that she was going to be testing the sweater fairly soon, I immediately thought I have the perfect yarn for this. So I believe the pattern calls for um, size seven, US seven or four and a half millimeter needles. I could not get gauge with this DK weight yarn. Um, it does, the pattern does call for DK, but I think that the DK she used in the sample was closer to a worsted or a heavy DK. Mine was, um, was not. <laughs> it's also super wash, so it lays very flat. It doesn't have any um, fuzzy bulk or anything around it to increase your gauge at all. So I ended up going up to a US eight or a five millimeter needle and I was very happy with it. It has tons of drape, which I wanted for this cardigan. Um, I think if I was using a non super wash wool that I would, I usually prefer for those to have a little bit more structure, but with this, something about a super wash, a shiny yarn, that feel to it, I, I prefer those to have a little bit more drape. They're a little bit heavier and I just think that that is the fabric I prefer with these. So that is what I did. Um, I think that she's going to be modifying the armholes a little bit because they were a little bit small for me until I blocked them. Once I wet blocked them, my sweater did grow a lot. Of course, this is superwash again. I made a very fitted sleeve. I followed her instructions for a um, very long ribbing for a very long ribbed cuff and I love the look of that. I did make mine long enough so that I could sort of scrunch it up on my arm or I could fold the cuff over. I like the look of both of those things. So I'm just, I'm really pleased with how the sleeves turned out in the end. Um, I like the fit of them. I like them to be more fitted. Unfortunately, my buttons are not here. My buttons are gonna be here tomorrow. <laughs> so I'll have to show y'all next time what it looks like with the buttons on. I ordered some brown wooden buttons. They're very simple. I think they're gonna be perfect with the aesthetic of this <laughs> sweater. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna try it on. <laughs> I did five buttonholes and you'll just have to imagine <laughs> the buttons here. I think it has a really great um, button band. It's a, it's not your average ribbing. So it's got some visual interest there and you can see my sleeves. I really like 
the length of the ribbing or um, I, can't, I made it long enough so that I could fold them over, which I also like a folded cuff. It hits me about, let's see, here's my belly button. So it comes below my belly button. It has a really nice two by two rib at the bottom. This great lace panel. There will be a button here at the top and then I've got stitch markers for where all my other buttons are gonna go. I like it with these color pants. I think this would actually be a super cute outfit together. Anyway. I can't back up further because the wall is right in chair <laughs> right behind me, but This I think is going to be so cute with dresses because um, it's the perfect length to kind of accentuate your waist. So I think this is going to be released pretty soon and I would make this again in a heartbeat. The fit is really nice. I mentioned I made the extra large and I feel like the fit is perfect for me. So thank you for letting me test it Alex. I absolutely love it. I'll be sure and show y'all next episode once i have my button sewn on and i will let you know whenever it is released so if you make sure and follow vera and rose on instagram then she always keeps you updated on when her patterns are going to be released and i will also make sure to post about whenever this pattern is released okay so let's talk about some whips <laughs> off my easy cardigan I still I just had so many things that I'm working on it's somewhat embarrassing so I'm not even going to show you all of those things and remind you of the many 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 whips that I have going on at the moment <laughs> I did pull out one of my oldest whips and it is the Thea no 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 not Thea this is the what is this oh what is it called? Oh, this is the Tanya by Caitlin Hunter or Boylan Networks. And it is knit with um, Foxy Lady from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. I absolutely love this yarn. However, it is a very light fingering <laughs> and I think it's knit on US3 needles. So it's slow going. I've totally passed the lace part. I'm just working stockinette stitch which is so funny because when I'm in the midst of a difficult lace color work or cabled project, you know, anything that requires me to really follow a pattern, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm 20% I'm through, 30% through this chart. 
I'm 50%. I'm almost done. All I want to do is get to the plain stockinette. <laughs> and then once I get there, I think, man, this is so incredibly boring. I wish I was working some lace. <laughs> so I'm at that point with the Tanya. I was going to take a lot of knitting um, to finish this up. So I've been dragging my heels and I keep moving on to different things. But my goodness, isn't that color gorgeous? And that lace, it's just beautiful. I made mine oversized because I really want that ruffled fluffy, or not fluffy. I really want that ruffled flowy look. And I think that this is just would be absolutely beautiful over dresses with pants, with skirts, with shorts. I mean, it would be such a great top if I could only finish it. I'm knitting it in the color one stab. So I got it back out and I'm trying to really remind myself to, um, to work on it. I put it where I can see it so that I don't forget about it as one of my whips. This is bottom up and that means you cast on a lot of stitches all at the bottom. I don't enjoy that. I prefer top down because to me casting on in your first few rows are absolutely the most finicky. Whenever you have 300 of them right at the beginning, it's not my favorite way to work it. But I have all of the tough stuff done. Now all I have is easy breezy sailing so I should just move along and finish it. <laughs> So as I've talked about before, this Foxy Lady yarn is a blend of silk and wool. It's a singles base. It's luminous. It's light. It's, it's really, really nice. This would be a wonderful all season top to wear in the summer by itself, in the winter, underneath a sweater or a jacket. I think that I'm going to do the sleeves that are come almost, you know, that come right above the elbow. So not three quarter, but longer than these for sure. If I ever get there. <laughs> so then, you know, whenever you're feeling depressed because you feel like you're working on something that's never going to be done, you need a little bit of an endorphin rush. And some people run, some people do drugs. Um, I like to cast on. <laughs> Casting on a new project is like a runner's high. So what I should do is wait because that's why I have so many projects. I just cast on and cast on and cast on and cast on and I get that great feeling. But then once you are working on it and working on it and we're in the middle of working on it, it's that feeling is gone. <laughs> so you have to cast on something new again. So I'm sure that most of you watch um, Andrea Mowry's YouTube channel. I do and I have seen her wearing her inclinations cowl quite a few times. I'm a huge fan of half fisherman's rib, of full brioche, of all of that. I love working it. I love the texture. It's super fun to me and she's doing a knit along. It's the inclina cowl knit along I, th I think is the hashtag. And I thought, oh, that'd be super fun. I have some spin cycle stash that I have been saving. I actually had bought it originally because I wanted to make one year one of her Rhinebeck sweaters was, um, oh, what was it called? It had like the bobbles and the color work. And I got Mississippi Marsala, which I will show you. I'll put on the screen what the name of that sweater was because I can't remember, but this is Mississippi Marsala. I love this colorway. I got two of these. Stone Crop. Stone Crop maybe? Stone something. So she did a cardigan and then she did a pullover and I wanted to make the pullover. Then I had some that I had got for a the Junction sweater. I actually got two colors for the Junction sweater because I wasn't sure. <laughs> and I ended up using my Burning Sensation. I also have the color Ghost Ranch, which I really, really love. And then when the Noct Nocturne base came out, I fell in love with brown sugar. And flashback. So if you've worked with Spin Cycle Yarns before, you know that no two skeins are ever the same and what you look at in the picture 
those same colors are going to be incorporated in this game, but it may look totally different. You don't know really what you're going to get. I had thought that the brown sugar and the flashback would be really cool together in the Inclina Cal. And I did not realize how much of a green undertone that the brown sugar had. got a very green undertone though. This has some of that same color in it. But as I cast it on, I felt like it really muddied the colors together. They're both the Nocturne base, so they're both darker bases before they're dyed than the dyed in the wool. It's the same sport weight yarn, but it's darker colors a little bit moodier which i'm all about the moody colors as you know so let me show you i feel like the colors got a bit muddied and what i also didn't realize because i had not bought the pattern yet is that i think that these colors with fading would be beautiful but instead these are stripes so it's one color and then the other and I'm not sure how I feel about these two colors together. As I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, I also have the Wololo, if that's how you say it, Wololo. <laughs> I think that it with um, a Magpie Fibers color that I have, one of my favorites, Evil Beaver, I think that might look really good together. Hmm, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I'll probably, I ripped this out and <laughs> <laughs> then cast it back on like four times and I've got to the same point trying to decide what to do. I think from a distance it kind of gives it that muddy brown green look which I like but I don't like the two colors so much close up. The way they look I don't know. I need your help. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think about this color. Maybe I should try Lolo and my Magpie Fibers yarn. What do y'all think I should do? This is a very serious problem. Anyway, thoughts on this color. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about sewing. <laughs> bought the Studio Tonic pattern by uh, Sew Liberated and I've cut out all of my pattern pieces. I'm going to be using this lightweight linen slub top material. I really love this color and I am going to, I'm not doing the v-neck, I'm going to do the rounded neck. I have everything cut out, so all I have to do is sew it, <laughs> but I'm going to tell y'all a secret. I don't like to sew. <laughs> I love the finished object. I do not enjoy sewing. I, I just, I think that I would enjoy it more if I had a dedicated space for it, if I could leave all of my materials out, but I don't. So I basically have to do it at the dining room table and I have to put, bring everything out, make a huge mess. And then at the end of my sewing session or whenever my kids need me or I have to go outside and do something, I have to put everything back up and it just takes a lot of the joy out of it for me for some reason. Or maybe I just don't like sewing. I don't know, but I don't really enjoy it that much. I do, however, desperately want to look like an art teacher and I need a big pockets to put yarn in. So of course I'm gonna make this. So maybe I'll have this sewn up by the next episode. It's all ready to go. Hopefully it won't take me that long. I had actually bought this fabric from Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics. Um, 
I don't know, last year. And I have bought it to make a estuary skirt. Nope, I bought it to make aeronaut pants. <laughs> Uh, but then I actually got some different fabric, which is some sand washed rayon in an olive green color that I changed my mind and I want to make the air knot pants out of that instead. So I wanted to use fabric in my stash instead of ordering new. And I saw this color. It's exactly the color I want. This will just be a really flowy version instead of more midweight, heavyweight fabric versions, which I think would actually probably be a better fabric choice. This will still be really nice and I will wear it a lot. So I'm still working on my Chantilly socks by Morgan and that knit along is still going strong. So be sure to check that knit along out. I'm also doing the Knit Diverse knit along, which is being hosted by Amy Scher or Cher. And I am still working on those projects. So if you'd like to stick around, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I have been reading and listening to lately. And while we chat about that, I'm going to knit on my Tanya top. about my great love of Agatha Christie <laughs> and um, I'm not going to go into all the Hercule Poirot books or Miss Marple books. I'm just simply going to say I would recommend that you read all of them in order. So start with the first Hercule Poirot book which is The Mysterious Affair at Styles, I believe and go through and read all of those <laughs> and do the same with Miss Marple and you need to read Miss Marple in order for sure especially because some of the later books have to do with things that happened in the earlier books. So I would read those in order. Agatha Christie also wrote a lot of plays. Quite a few of her famous books were actually adapted from plays that she had written. So last week I started listening to The Unexpected Guest and I could tell immediately that it was adapted from a play. It all took place in basically one room and it was amazing. <laughs> the ending the ending took me by complete surprise. So you think it's the end, but it's not. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to spoil too much, but listen to it. Sometimes, I think sometimes it feels like it's moving a little bit slowly, but it's worth it in the end. It, it's one of her great endings. I would have loved to see that play in person. I think it's so good. So some non-Agatha Christie things that I have been listening to. <sighs> I listened to the Thursday Murder Club a while back and I noticed that it is now being made into a movie by Steven Spielberg. So I love this mystery because while yes, it is a murder mystery, it has a lot of humor. It has a, it's, it feels light. It doesn't feel dark still somehow. And the main characters in it are <laughs> like late seventies and I would love to be best friends with them. They are pretty cool. <laughs> I loved the book. I thought the narrator did an amazing job. I listened to it on Audible, and I am now listening to book number two, which is entitled The Man Who Died Twice. So I think it's great. I think it's a great light mystery. It does have some very serious parts in it, but I really enjoyed it. I think the author did a wonderful job with all of the details. It takes place in England and it's just, 
just really it was really fun to listen to next, in the next episode i will tell you what i think about book number two i am really enjoying it so far okay one of my favorite books that I have read in a very long time though is another mystery and it is called The Nine and a Half Lives of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart somebody. <laughs> I actually listened to this book a few months ago and it was recommended to me by my friend Becky from A Hand and Letter. It was amazing. I mean as I'm listening to it I have no idea where this is going, what is happening at first. Like, it's just, <laughs> I mean, the ending, I could have never in a million years guessed what was happening behind the scenes. It, I don't want to spoil it. Read it. It is so good or listen to it. I think the narrator did an amazing job and I loved listening to this book. Sometimes I wish that I would have been reading it because I feel like if I read something on the page, I also say it in my head. And so, so I get a little bit more retention of it that way. And sometimes when I listen to an audiobook, there'll be names or they'll be talking about different people towards the beginning that I haven't picked up yet <laughs> who is who. Whereas if I'm reading a book, I can kind of flip back and I remember I've, I've read this name. So I know who that is. Just hearing names sometimes is harder for me to retain who is who and what is going on with that person. And that is important in this book. But if you're paying attention, listening, you know, to the audiobook is no problem. And then you definitely after you just listen to the first chapter or two, you definitely don't have that problem anymore. The plot, the writing, the reading of the narrator, everything was absolutely magnificent. I thought it was so nice to read a book that I did not know what was going to happen. I could not guess the outcome or the plot at all. And I loved that because sometimes I feel like if you've read one, you've read them all <laughs> when it comes to mysteries. Sometimes it feels like it's the same story being rewritten over and over again. Absolutely not the case with this one. It was fresh. It was new. It was a must read in my opinion. So if you have read this book, I would love to hear what you thought about it. If you decide to read or listen to this book after watching this episode, please tell me what you think about it. I would love to hear your thoughts. I think it was an excellently written book. I don't think I could praise it anymore. I'm out of words. As far as farm news goes, we got some new baby chicks. You may remember if you are a longtime viewer that we lost both of our roosters from animal attacks and I'm very excited to say that we have got a new rooster, Baby Chick, and he is the exact same breed as Kenny Rogers was with all of that beautiful gray plumage, um, just silvery gray luscious feathers. <laughs> which I love. And Kenny Rogers is also the sweetest rooster ever. So that's great whenever you have kids or you have yourself and you don't like being spurred and chased by mean roosters. Um, but they're doing well. They are getting bigger and they're so fluffy and cute. So I'm excited for them to mature and be able to go live with the big girls <laughs> out in the coop. Right now they are in a warm little brooder all to themselves. We have seven new baby chicks and I go out in the building where we have them and I pull a chair up and I just sit and watch them. <laughs> I absolutely love the sounds they make. I think one of the cutest things is whenever they get a drink of water because they bend down, they put their nose in it and then they put their beak up like this and they swallow, swallow, swallow. And it's just, it's adorable. I'll try to put a video of it at the end. I think that the <laughs> baby chicks are just so cute. May is quickly wrapping up and that means the unofficial beginning of summer. I hope that you are all enjoying some nice weather and some nice making and I will chat with y'all soon. Happy knitting! Mm -hmm.